Oh my god, Logan's lost in the swamps of sorrow, and we'll oh. just carry on. So sad, too bad. Sad that Logan has to go the way of poor Artek. Okay, I, I was, that was the reference I was getting. I was stalling on the name because I forgot what the swamp was actually called in the book. Oh, uh, the swamp of sadness, I think? Okay, sadness, that's it. It's like, I see we've horse stumbled horse? into a Crash Bandicoot game all of a sudden. Oh yeah, so uh, welcome back to our Pac-Man World 2 playthrough, ladies and gentlemen. We've pretty much reached our ultimate destination in the form of Ghost Ooh. Island, which got a hell of a Hall Halloween-themed makeover since the last game. Also, are you on roller skates? I mean, it's called Ghost Island for a reason. It's weird, though, because I remember back in Pac-Man World 1, it all started... Like, when we first started the, started the game, we were literally on a beach that was very much pirate-themed, and honestly, it felt very light and jolly and all that stuff, and all of a sudden, here we are in a place that's... Well, really wouldn't be out of place in, say, I don't know, your your typical B-rated Halloween special. Probably <laughs> scary godmother. Uh, yes, yeah, scary godmother. Oh I my mean, god, that's 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 honestly a series of movies I need to check back on again. Like, I haven't uh, seen them in years. <laughs> I honestly never saw the appeal. It's very it's... cutesy, from what I remember. I guess. Well, I, I only, feel like cutesy only... is kind of the wrong way to put it, but it is very much like it was definitely geared with kids in mind. Though it does yeah. have its fair share of uh, charm there on, on the occasion. Yeah. I suppose. I remember when I was like, younger, I it, thought it, it was... It, it at least tried. I remember okay. when I was younger, I thought it was like a Playmobil movie. <laughs> or like a Fisher-Price product. But no, oh, apparently God. it's based on a series of children's books. It's yeah. actually kind of nice. So That's anyway, cool. just... Just going back to a question I asked earlier, um, why are we on roller skates now? Because we're on a boardwalk, and what's normally something you see at a boardwalk? People riding on roller skates, or at least that's how it used to be in the 90s. And I could just, and just from observation, I'm going to take a guesstimate that he kind of controls a little bit more sluggishly on these. I wouldn't outright say sluggish, like, in a way it feels like a, a like, well, oh. Clearly they're taking inspiration from the ice skating level way back in um, the ice world, or the snow world. Though, I'd say you have a little more, free, more freeform controls. I would say at most... Oh boy. Yeah. So he's more slippy... So, uh, he's more slippy slidey than, uh, stiff. Uh, yeah, exactly. I would say slip, slip, slippery in a way, but not to a point where I would say it's very hindering. I would say at the most, it does make collecting certain items a bit of a chore. Assuming you again, you want to go for hundred percent completion, which yeah. in a game like this, like you see what we've been through last time, I'd rather not put up with that shit just to get hundred percent completion. No way yes. in hell we're going back in the drink. Yeah, especially now, now it's because it'll kill us. Yeah, it's poisonous. I guess that being said, I don't remember if we asked this, but I guess I'll ask again for the sake of courtesy. Would you say that overall this game is harder to one hundred percent than the first game? Um, it's hard for me to say, because truth be told, I never actually beat the first game. Oh. I only got as far as the very last portion of the space world, where you fight against the King Galaxian thing. Oh. What? Which was a massive pain in the ass. You fought a Galaxian in the last game? Um, it's weird. Like it's, one of it's... these things? <laughs> well, no, no, it's not exactly the boss, the boss Galaxian we just ate. It was literally like this giant 3D alien that they called the King, like the Galaxian King or something along those lines. Because, like, that entire level is a shooting level. And, I mean, thematically it's pretty cool, but the boss itself is an absolute pain. Hmm. I gotta say, I am enjoying the music in this stage at least. Oh yeah, yeah. the music in this is pretty damn good, all things considered. But I feel like I've actually heard it before in, like, a Super Monkey Ball 2 custom map pack. I Maybe. Not, I wouldn't be surprised if... That, I wouldn't be surprised if whoever made that that mod pack pretty much used this song. No, I'm pretty sure they did for like one of the earlier mods. You know, that's honestly something that I've thought about um, suggesting to you guys. Like, I know you guys did a look out of one of the games a while back, but do you think at some point we should probably do a little bit more stuff involving Super Monkey Ball? I'd be glad to. Like, truth be told, I have been, I, I have been considering doing a look at the first two Super Monkey Ball games. If I'm able to bring back my Hop Hog, um, I will try and record Super Monkey Ball 2, like, the adventure playthrough. But first right. I have to do Ape Escape 2. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. We, we still gotta get around to doing that. It's been, like, years since we did the first yeah. Uh, yep. Oh, Truth boy. be told, I've been, I've been tempted to redo that commentary, but do the original game as opposed to the PSP remake. 
That's fine. I mean, so no more Richard Horvitz. Nope, no more Horvitz. Aww. Yeah, because you know I appreciate what the remake tried to do, but I do know a lot of people still consider the original King. It's just better in a gameplay sense because, well, that's what really tried to push forward the uh, dual shot controller. Uh huh. And honestly, it's funny to think like the first one was such a huge hit, and then every other game afterwards, it was nothing more than a sleeper hit at most. Mm. Which, is, which is a shame, because I do think, like, I mean, it, this is probably something we should say for whenever we go get back to Ape Escape, but I really do want a, a new game already. It's been way too long since Ape Escape 3. Or at, the, or at the very least, let Mon or at the very least let Ape Escape have its turn for the insane reignited whatever nickname the Medieval remake has. Oh, dude, absolutely. I think it would really benefit from the remake treatment, assuming they don't have that like the Parappa remake. Ah, uh, crap, I'll yeah. be right back. Well, okay. okay. Well, honestly, with the Parappa remake, I wouldn't really call that just, like, an outright remake. It was just, like, a very badly handled HD port. Yeah. It's weird. It's weird I say that, though, because it's really not a bad port. It just felt like it, it was mostly oh. cobbled together over the assets they already had. Well, there was also that. Isn't it based off the port on the PSP? It is. Okay, so I'm guessing it was just an issue of there was, like, a conversion problem from transporting it to the handheld to the PS4. I wouldn't be surprised if that were the case. Like, I I, co I sort of felt a similar sen sentiment when um, Konami released their Castlevania Requiem collection for the PS4, where they literally just, well, they pretty, it was, it's essentially just the, the, the Dracula X Chronicles again, but without the Dracula X remake, which I mm. thought was kind of stupid that they mixed that in the first place. But otherwise, yeah, it's pretty much the same deal. It, it's pretty much a slightly upscaled version of the, those, uh, of the Dracula X versions of those games. And, you know, same same thing with Parappa. They just brought back the PSP remake, upscaled it, and, well... I mean, it's not a it's not terrible, but you could sort of tell it was... They could have done more. Like, the like only maybe thing... Up the, like, up the sound quality or something. Or, or, excuse me, just remaster the entire sound design altogether. Yeah, because... And maybe also change a, a bit of the controls, because one of the things I hear most prevalently is that, like, with some songs, one in particular, they kind of, like, uh, messed up the, uh, the, pro the button inputs. Honestly, not really. I felt... I, I, like, the, the Parappa one always had really wonky input... input uh, detection, and I would say that the PS4 re remake, weirdly enough, is probably the best out of it. I'm back. Okay. Welcome oh, back. hello. And welcome, I just to our, welcome, welcome to our next level of the game, Nightcrawling. Ooh, spooky. But anyway, the, yeah. only way, the only reason they bring that up is that I could have sworn that there were some people said that the Cheap Cheap stage is actually made worse on the PS4 version. Oh no, Cheap Cheap was always, Cheap Cheap was always bullshit, no matter the port. Wasn't the uh, PS4 version based on the PSP version? Yeah, that's what we were talking about. Yeah. So, like, the input lag is tied with the audio specifically. Pretty much. But again, it's like the the input the input detection on that game was always wonky as hell. So it doesn't yeah. really surprise me that it wasn't that much better with the remaster. So but... it's not it's not just a problem exclusive PS4 version, but it was also PSP. Well, PSP and the original PS1 game, because the original PS1 game, I don't I I don't think it's aged that well. Ah. Yeah. Honestly, Which I think me... that. <laughs> Which makes me think, like, if they ever make a Guitar Man remake, uh, will they use the PS2 base or the PSP version with, like, the two extra tracks? I feel like I feel like for their sake, they may as well go to back to the PS2 version, just because the PSP remake, well, it, in some ways it was a little worse in terms of its production value, but, um, anyway. Well, I mean, they had to use, like, a slightly lower poly count from, like, a couple. Yeah, slightly lower poly, and I think they have the frame weight. Uh, frame weight. Frame weight. Frame yeah, they cut it down to, like, 30. Yeah. They cut it down to 30 pounds. But anyway, uh, just just talking about remakes, another thing that... I, I think we might have talked about this before, but I guess we could talk about it again. And also maybe hear Icky's input. Like, say for... If they... Because I do know that there's been heavy talk about it for like the past couple of years. The idea of like revisiting Klonoa. Like, would would they... Would it be... Oh, what I say? Would they be better off just doing a re-remake of the first game? No, I'd rather yeah. they legitimately try and make a remake of the second game. I was about to say they already did. They already technically did that. Right? It's called the Wii version. No, I said a re-remake. Oh, well, a remake I of mean, the remake. 
I mean, honestly, I think the Klonoa, re like the original, like the Klonoa Wii remake we have on Wii is perfectly fine. Like, I would say the, at worst, it's script, like the, the script, the, the changes they made to the script weren't necessary. The English voice it. acting is not good. Well, opinion. yeah, there's that too. Like, the, that's... Uh, which is weird because they got, like, they got a lot of uh, well-known actors, like oh, uh, they, Dave they Mallow. Have a yeah, they have Dave Mallow, Laura Bailey, J.B. Blanc. I would say it's... I would say it's mainly an issue of voice direction rather than the actors themselves, because I feel like if they had a better script and better direction, they could play those characters perfectly fine. A part of it also doesn't help too that the game, like the in-game animations, were stiff as fuck. There's also that they weren't that stiff. I think they, they I don't think they were that. They were that great at it. They, I think it wasn't that great. I yeah. think they could have also... done. They could have done more than just typical Sonic Adventure style animations. Then I again, think... like, the actual graphical Ooh. fidelity of the Wii make is actually oh. really good. Oh, yeah, no, I will never, I will never knock, like, the actual graphical quality. Like, it's, it's easy, it's easily solved. It's easily a step up from Planoa 2. It's otherwise... one of the best looking games on the Wii, in my opinion. Oh, absolutely. But hmm. other than that, just, yeah, like, go, going back to the whole remakes, I'll agree with the E. I'd rather they start planting the seeds for Planoa 2 remake because it's desperately in need of one. Oh, and yeah. And speaking of things that could get the remake treatment, Pac-Man World. Yeah, you know what? Maybe maybe that could be something that they do for the 40th anniversary, because they've been really quiet about their plans for it for a while. It, it's been 20 years since the first Pac-Man world that made perfect sense. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that on top of the fact that we are basically in an era of remake rehash, so they have ample reason to. Yeah. It's what sells, oh, oh. baby. But um, going back to the just going back to the whole thing with Pac-Man, real quick. Just yeah, we're currently in his 40th anniversary, and there's still we still don't know exactly what they have planned for the character. Like uh, yeah, we brought up before that there is a rumor going around that apparently they're gonna do like a new Pac-Man based style game in the format of uh, Championship Edition, which I wouldn't mind at all. Uh, there's that, and, a, and like this, a, a huge collection of all of his past games, like like the arcade titles and the first two Pac-Man World games, which that would be a freaking Nirvana in of itself as a Pac-Man fan. So like yeah. a Mega Collection? Uh, in a sense. Much. Hmm. Uh, and, and other than that, I think the other big thing that they've brought up, brought like brought up, is the possibility of a new Pac-Man World, like a Pac-Man World Four. Which I mean, honestly, I am curious to see what that'd be like in this day and age. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking at this level design, and I can't help but think of the Woodland levels again. Uh huh. It, it, they're kind of like that. Only I'd say there's a little. It, it doesn't feel quite as well, void. It feels a lot more realness than woody. Then there's that, and I feel there's a little more terrain to actually be that actually just more terrain in general. It's not just a whole bunch of well, very thin trees and all that. Yeah. If that means anything. And hyper realistic scary spiders. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Forget the spiders. You know, I always found it interesting that they're like the uh, like the. In, I, what am I trying to say? I always found it interesting the whole disconnect between how the American branch of Namco ha uh, handles Pac-Man versus how the Japanese branch handles Pac-Man. Because like when it comes to like the American branch, they tend to treat things fairly safe, like keep it within the roots of like the character designs and whatnot. Like you got these spiders that, despite looking hyper realistic, still have the Pac-like pac 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 -like eyes for some and reason. Then, and then there's the ghosts that. I don't know why, but for whoever initially designed them in the American branch gave them these weirdly, those weirdly shaped mouths. What, the wiggly mouths? Yeah. Uh, well, but then you got the, and then, and then you got the whole, like, the, how the Japanese branch, or the original Japanese branch handles Pac-Man, and just how, for lack of a better word, stylized it all feels. Um, is that the branch they gave us stuff like the bubblegum monster and whatnot? Uh... <laughs> Actually, yeah, you they kind of are. But I mean that that's Honestly, I remember the whole thing with Pac-Man 2 was just an anomaly in and of itself. I'm just talking about like every other game, like say, well, Pac Pack and Roll or Pac Picks or even the name like all the stuff like regarding like name oh. museums and whatnot. Just how just how stylized and energetic it all feels compared to the more contemporary feel of how the American branch handles Pac-Man, if that means mm -hmm. anything. I What's the difference between the Japanese and American branches for Pac-Man or Namco? I feel like with 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 the Japanese branch, they take a they take a few more risks and are a little more stylized in a sense. Whereas again, Pac-Man World, like the American branch, were or Namco or Namco Home Tech as they used to be called, 
again, they're very contemporary. They usually just keep Pac-Man to one particular idea or mindset. The fact that he's just this, well, average everyday pack person with the family and just has to deal with ghosts and other spooky-like creatures. Was this made from the American branch? Yes, this was a Namco Home Tech that developed Pac-Man World 2. Huh. Did they develop all the Pac-Man World games? All but the third game. And uh, Pac-Man World Rally. Did they do, uh, uh, what's it called? Miss Pac-Man's Mystery Ma uh, Maze Madness? Uh, Maze Madness? Yes, they made that too. Huh. Like, honestly, just... It's 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 just an interesting thing that I'd say is worth looking up, like the differences of how the American branch handles Pac-Man versus how the Japanese branch handles Pac-Man. It's like it's 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 literally night and day. Yeah, I can imagine. But um, on that note, folks, uh, we've only got one level left to go before we reach the final boss. So stay tuned for the finale, where we'll hopefully find Logan at the Ghost Bayou. Yeehaw! I mean, uh, who that? <laughs> Till next time, guys. I tell you, Sanjay, I don't like that there Pac-Man there right there.